different philosophical schools, not named after an individual person, but after the public site where they met and did philosophy. Quite a different logic, not, um, uh, for one thing, they talk about rhetoric and dialectic and other more traditional philosophical techniques that Epicureans reject. Um, they uh, have a theory that um, in some of our perceptions, we can grasp the truth of things immediately, and we can distinguish them from false kind of uh, presentations. They also developed an advanced form of logic, propositional logic, which is still the basic kind of logic that we use and teach here in philosophy today, as opposed to the earlier term logic and syllogism in Aristotle. Um, according to their physics, it's basically like the opposite of Epicurean atomism, where you have an infinite number of discrete, indivisible entities. They think that the cosmos consists of a single, continuous body that can be divided and have different, different kinds of uh, qualities, but you have a single world or cosmos which is then surrounded by an infinite void, but there's exactly one um, cosmos. And because they have this continuum theory, they can talk about, they can try to explain action at a distance and things like force fields. And they have a view about the cyclical destruction of the whole cosmos and then its rebirth, a kind of, kind of idea that's sort of like the uh, Big Bang theory that says at some point the Big Bang keeps it expanding and then eventually it, it contracts back into itself and, and then um, and then there's another Big Bang, and that gives, gives rise to another cosmic epoch, and this cycle of destruction of the world and then recreation of it happens um, infinitely. Um, their ethics is about living in accordance with nature, and they take the end to be eudaimonia, or happiness, or success, but they believe that that has nothing whatsoever to do with pleasure and everything to do with virtue. So whereas Epicureans think that happiness has almost nothing to do with virtue and everything to do with pleasure, the Stoics hold essentially the opposite view. And that we need to cultivate intellectual virtues like wisdom so that we can have virtues like justice, self-control, uh, courage, and so on. And they believe we should be thoroughly engaged with politics. We have all kinds of civic and other forms of obligations that are more important than our, even our own um, views and certainly than our own uh, pleasure. They, in a way, adapt but accept and defend traditional uh, religion and forms of education, and they try to set up this idea of a model um, sage. Um, now I'll go through some of the major figures there. The founder, Zeno of Kittium, um, who's actually from Cyprus, but he moved to Athens and set up this philosophical school. Um, Chrysippus of Soli, one of the most prolific authors of antiquity. He composed about 750 works. He's the guy who invented propositional uh, logic. Um, none of his works survived, but there's extensive fragments and testimonia about his view. And he's the one that really crystallized Stoicism into an overall system where all parts of it reinforce each other. I mentioned Epictetus before, a slave born in the region that is now in modern, in a region that's now modern Turkey, but he lived in Rome and actually taught Stoic philosophy, although he was a slave until he was banished from Rome and moved to Nicopolis. Um, his philosophy was recorded by a student of his named Arian, both his discourses and a handbook of Stoic uh, philosophy, which was in turn very influential on Marcus Aurelius, who was emperor of Rome from 161 to 180, and uh, who read and admired Epictetus and other Stoic philosophers, and wrote his own philosophical reflections called the Meditations, which he didn't intend to be philosophical treatises read by other people. These were basically his own journals, but they survived and have been edited. And so we can actually read the Stoic philosophical thoughts of a Roman um, emperor. And I think it's, it's fascinating to compare uh, this thought of a lowly immigrating slave expounding Stoicism and then 
um, all the way up to the highest echelon of power in Rome is how wide of an appeal this philosophy had. 